Welcome to the Cripes Cast, sponsored by Jolly Good Soda. Hey, everybody, how you doing today? My guest is Julie Nolke. Uh, did I mention I'm your host, Charlie Barons? I guess you probably know that if you're listening. But Julie Nolke, I was introduced to her the way a lot of people were. She had these great pandemic videos, like explaining the pandemic to her past self. That was sort of my first introduction to her. But then when you kind of go down the rabbit hole of Julie Nolke videos on YouTube, I was just blown away at how great the writing was, the the directing, as I mentioned to her in this podcast, her use of silence, uh, which is not something, frankly, I always have the confidence to use in my videos because I'm always afraid people are going to click off. So when I see someone use a lot of that and use it so well and finding all those comedic moments in silence, I'm just super blown away and impressed. So I was very excited to talk to Julie. She's got a great background. Uh, an interesting background growing up in Canada it, it's sort of a different entertainment scene up there so we discussed that for those of you just listening for Midwest topics don't worry we got those in there too Julie gives a very good play-by-play on how to effectively get your car out of the snow and it involves broken hockey sticks okay that's your deep tease of the intro but I really enjoyed kind of nerding out with Julie on uh, sort of comedy and, and what it takes to you know make different videos and and have them hit on different platforms online. I know a bunch of you out there are, are trying to make videos yourselves. And so I think that that part of this interview will be very interesting for you. But anyway, before we get to my interview with Julie, what else is going on? Well, we spent a lot of time this week getting a new website up and going. So that's good. You go to mandawakminute.com for those of you Mandawak Minute fans out there. For those of you Cast fans that don't know what the Mandawak Minute is, we actually just put out a new Mandawak Minute video this week. You can check it out. And with the new website, comes new merch oh jeez louise is he doing a merch plug you bet your tush i am we got cool new opats they're green and kind of gold ish they're good for uh the packers anyway what else is going on uh, not a whole lot make sure you follow the cripes cast at cripes cast facebook instagram twitter we put out videos and, and photos and stuff thanks for rating the podcast and leaving a comment super helpful i think that's about it oh tour dates cripescast.com we're going to naples and then denver we just add another show in salt lake city bunch of other places so that'll be great okay i i got more i think somewhere that i'm supposed to talk about but i forget what it is and i'm late to get up to grandma sue's we're going over to her friend lois bentley's actually over there in wapan and i'm late right now and she's not gonna be happy if i'm late if i said grandma there was too much traffic she's not gonna believe me there's not traffic between milwaukee and fond du lac well maybe today with the packers game anyway that would be a lie that'd be a fib now i'm gonna have to tell her that i i'm late because i was doing my podcast intro and you know shoot now I'm thinking about that conversation. Oh, is your podcast more important than me? No, that's not what she'd say. She'd say, oh, you're so busy. You need to have a drink and forget about work. Yes, I do. I'm going to go do that after I get to Fond du Lac. Anyway, I'm way off track. Here's my interview with Julie Nolke. Look, I got like one of these arm things. It, it almost makes it feel real. Does it feel like I'm not just in my... Uh, dining room area of my house <laughs> yeah it does does it yeah nice. you just like broke the illusion though does that i, I know i'll, the mic I'll goes edit that away. Out. yeah okay good the mic goes away when you eat dinner when you eat thanksgiving dinner it's just strapped to my no i mean uh, no i i live like um look this is my this is the furniture in my living room it's like these two oh. couches from like my, my uh my nana's basement you know that we I used love to play them. sega on and that piano oh. And then a milk can. So that that's like, that's where that's I'm at. Ex- that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. That's my level of maturity right now. You know? I love it. It tells Thanks. me a lot about you. It does. It says, uh, this guy's not an interior decorator. He does not spec. have his shit together. No, he gives yeah. 2.8 fucks about making his uh, livable spaces pleasant and welcoming for people as they come through the door. I love that for you. Thank you. Thank you. That's exciting. I love your plant. Enough about my background. Let's talk about your background. Yeah. Okay. Fine. (laughs) Yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, Wow. The plant. Okay. uh, Yeah. She goes all the way up. Yeah. You know, you, I I already complimented it. You didn't, you now you're just showing up. How far up does it go though? Since we're going up. Well, I mean, we got, we got over there a little bit. We got uh, all the way to the window. She comes, she comes right here, right by my head. No yeah. way. I got to get one of those. That's that's your standard vine. 
It's uh, I think it's like a pothos or something, but she's okay. grown so much. I had her since second year of university and I've cut her and propagated her so many times that I actually have her in different places around the house as well. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's mm-hmm. um, that's also a very thrifty of you, you know, why Thank buy you. many plants when you can just buy one? When I can surround my house in plants. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty happy with her. Yeah. But no. yeah, that's my, that's my background. I got a cute little poster here. That's like, it says panties are 50 cents, Only which 50 I think cents. is an appropriate. Yeah. A good price. Mm-hmm. Good deal. Yeah. It was before inflation. Um, you know, the, the yeah, panties have inflation. really gone up through the roof. Yeah. 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 And then 2008 was a tough year for panties. Tough year for panties. Yes. And, yeah. and now I'm concerned what's happening this year at least in the States. I don't know how it is in Canada, but I think inflation is sort of a universal thing. Um, It is. Yeah. There's actually a panties bubble that people are are waiting to pop. This is why I'm glad you came on because I I don't think a lot of people know this and, you know, they're not going to get this news on Fox or CNN. They're going to have to come. Well, that's for sure. Right here to the Christ cast. Yeah. So (laughs) um, it's always nice when I'm this far into a an interview and I'm checking my levels and they're down, you know? So that just makes, that makes everybody's life a lot easier uh, in about uh, two days when this is being edited. Sorry, Colleen. Um, Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I just put them up. And then what is that? Love boat. I, it's tough to read at the angle. Oh, it's love bot. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's like a, a Toronto street artist. He like, Oh, it's so cool. He does a lot of like street art or like graffiti style stuff. And then he started making these like cement robots and putting them in different places around the city. And they're supposed to represent like love. Like when you see one, like, you know, be kind to the people around you and he'll just like sneakily put them in different places yeah um so i actually have one i have like one of his miniatures no uh, kidding for my birthday yeah so you can like buy a miniature or is this a unique art piece that you you that was on the street and now is in your house oh and i just stole it i was like this is mine now um (laughs) no he (laughs) yeah no uh um my husband bought it for me yeah but every single one is um uh, unique. So you get the, the like certification or papers of origin oh, or whatever it is. And that's yeah, cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. He's yeah. like the Toronto Banksy, Banksy, except everybody knows who he is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. I love it. And that's my, that's my background. That is your back. Well, we haven't even addressed your college lanyard over there. Um, hanging up. Yo, but. they're not, they're not college. They're flexes. What? One is, oh, uh, are these one press passes? Festival. Oh, wow. You bet that this one's for just for laughs. I'm sure no. you know, just for laughs I being do... in the comedy space. Yeah. Yeah. When, when did you do just for laughs? Um, let's look 20, at the year. 2019. <laughs> <laughs> 2019. Uh, I was there. Cool. What did you do at just for laughs? Uh, I was showing, a. uh, short film that I had made. I do not do stand up comedy. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you manage it. It oh, I would poop my pants. No, I'd be so scared. No, yeah. you well, everybody is the first time. You would be great at it. You got all you need to do is be a writer and you're an amazing writer. So you'd be great. Oh my God. Thank you. I but yeah. I feel like you have an element of like improvising and and like the, you're feeling out the crowd and whatnot. Sure. Whereas I am so in my like I'm so reliant on editing yeah that I, I i would just be like trying to edit and censor as i speak <laughs> you get over that know. you get over that and then, yeah. Uh, yeah and i think you find the best part is is like when you're up on stage and you have a bit and you only have the jumping off point and maybe the landing point and then finding the rest of the bit uh in front of an audience it comes to you though it comes to you How? because what you you have you're you are a better writer than I am I've watched a ton of your stuff and I am positive those words are inside of you and they will just come out (laughs) they will because when it's like because your brain is hit with this extra hit of adrenaline right and so it's in that it's like you can't you can't filter like you just have to like be a vessel for like the thoughts as they come 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, what well, is your background? Your background is in sketch, I believe, right? You, oh, no, I, you I, did traditional acting, right? I did. Why don't I you know. tell I went, me? <laughs> <laughs> I went the traditional route. I went to university for fucking acting, like the most wow. subjective thing in the world. Yeah. I went to get grades for, and I paid so much fucking money like yeah. tuition to basically roll on the floor and cry. But um, I thought I was going to be a, like a theater actor is what I wanted. And I was told in university that I wasn't funny and girls who looked like me were, were never really considered funny, um, which wasn't entirely untrue at the time because it's not like, I don't know. I, I get a lot of comments. I actually got one this morning that was like, oh, a friendly reminder why women can't be funny. It's just like, it, it's part of the culture of comedy a little bit, but it's certainly changing. Anyway, so I, I uh, went to school for that, did a lot of Shakespeare, and then I graduated and like couldn't book a job to save my life. Like actually, like couldn't, I would go into casting rooms and just shit the bed and I don't know. And so I started making YouTube videos because I was like, well, I need to practice. And, uh, and I want to write and I feel like, I feel like I am funny and I feel like I have a voice and I have things to say. Uh, yeah. And then the rest is kind of all history. And now I do, I guess I do still audition and work in the industry, but it's kind of, uh, in parallel to my YouTube online life. Yeah. I, I can relate to that shitting the bed aspect. Uh, pretty good. I, I was terrible, yeah. terrible actor. Um, well, I guess, <laughs> I, I, I just like, I can't do the audition thing, you know? It's, it's fucking sucks. It's not even real acting. No, it's not. It's, it's, uh, I agree. And it's also like, I, you spend so much time on this one script, you mm -hmm. go in there and then you're supposed to like crumple it up and drop it in the garbage on your way out. So they know you're done with it and all these stupid little like things I they don't... tell you to get the job. Oh God. And it's, it's all the ass kissing and nepotism too, yeah. that I was like, I can't be a part. I don't like, I'm terrible at schmoozing. Uh -huh. Everybody thinks that I've got like a horrible resting bitch face. Cause I don't know like how to <laughs> like, I don't know, kiss ass anyway. Yeah. I, I, I like really couldn't, could not book a job. And then it wasn't until I like started making YouTube videos that like casting directors were like, knock, knock, hi. Isn't that, I, I was in um, LA for a while and spending so much time on the networking side and it wasn't mm. until I just started on the craft. And that's what I like about your stuff is like, not only did you um, start working on the craft, but you weren't getting a lot of traction for a while. Can you sort of give us that story? Cause I know you start off with cooking videos as well. Oh right? yeah. Oh shit, you know that, eh? Damn it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping They're you'd good. let that slide. They're good. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So what had happened was, um, I couldn't, I wasn't booking jobs out of school and I was starting to get really discouraged, really heartbroken, but I, I kept feeling like, you know, when you know what you're supposed to do with your life, you're like one of those lucky privileged people. And I, and I knew that I was, had to be a performer. I just like, I couldn't imagine doing anything else, but yet the industry that I was trying so hard to get into was like, Oh, you don't belong here. So I was really, really heartbroken. So when I started making YouTube videos, I was like, it can't be acting. Like everything about acting, everything about watching movies, watching television shows, like I found absolutely heartbreaking. And so I was like, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to still perform and still be hopefully entertaining, but I'll do it in a totally different field. And that way, like maybe I'll find a newfound love for it again. And so I went down the path of, you know, for a long time, we did recipes inspired by movies. The YouTube channel was called Feeling Peckish. Yeah. Um, and, and that was like a fun journey. And it actually did pretty fucking well. Like um, this company that was a, a food and travel production company out of Santa Monica uh, found us and they were like, yo, you should be making original content for us. And that was kind of our first big break of, um, you know, getting paid to make content. And I was doing a lot of hosted stuff and a lot of hosted travel stuff. And I became the host of TripAdvisor videos for a little while. Um, and then I hit like a really, really, I don't know, important fork in the road where I was like, oh shit, this is where I have to decide, like, am I going to do hosted travel food videos forever and kind of like keep pursuing that route? Or 
Do I stop while I'm ahead? Do I say, yes, that was great. I learned a lot. I grew, I became a better person in front of the camera and I like healed after all of that pain. And now I can pursue what I ultimately wanted. And so I did, I don't remember what year it was, but it was a couple of years back that I totally stopped cooking videos and switched the channel to be entirely sketch comedy. Wow. And it was that yeah. conscious, huh? Totally. It was definitely a deliberate choice, especially because I was kind of like the food videos, there wasn't that love there. And like, you know, whenever you're making content, it's got to come from a place of love because it is a brutal job. Like the hustle is so brutal if you are not extremely passionate about what you're making. And I just like the food for me, I lost it. Yeah. You did not choose the fork. Uh, mm -hmm. So <laughs> With, with that though, were you still getting paid? Like, did you just say, okay, I got enough money. I'm just going to put it right here. Were you doing something else for cash at that point? I was lucky. I, um, I worked as a bartender for a while and then I got an office job and the office job allowed me to make YouTube videos on the weekends and in the evenings. And, um, those videos that we were doing for Tastemade were paying. So I was able to eventually quit my office job. And then, you know, we were making a ton of food videos. And that's when I was like, no, no, this is not making me happy. And so it really right. was a risk because it was my entire household's income was these oh. food videos. And then I just cut it off entirely. That's, that's, it could, did you give yourself like a runway uh, financially <laughs> there? Or were you like, was um, it make or break at this point? I had, I had maybe like a three month buffer. Okay. I knew I had rent for three months. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. But honestly, That's, like yeah. I, at the, I mean, looking back now you go, oh, that was really risky. But at the time, I think because as, as an artist or a creator, you learn to have so many irons in the fire right. that I, I wasn't scared. Cause I felt like I knew how to make money and I could always bartend again. Like I'm not. I'm not better than any job. And I was more than happy to go back and bartend and make sketch comedy than keep making YouTube videos that were all about food and hosting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I did that hosting thing for a while too. We have a lot of similarities, I think, in that. Yeah? Uh, and yeah, well, yeah, but I, for me, I felt, as I think you're saying, it's kind of like a shadow career. It's like, this gets me on camera. Yes, it gets yeah. me maybe closer to what I want to do than what I'm doing, but it's not what I want to do. Yeah, it's like it's just slightly off. Right. You know, and you can see the trajectory of it and you go, oh, that's just not quite it. Right, you right. Know? I once did, um, when I was trying to make it into the industry many years ago, I did a lot of background work. Uh, and so I would just I be an... Have you done that too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to oh. know who you are. I, I want, like, where can we pause and what movie to see you? I don't, I don't know if you'll ever see me. I was in like a hockey arena cheering a hockey game. There was like a Jason Priestley show that I was like a wedding guest at, uh, but I found that work so heartbreaking. Like, cause oh. you're just, you're witnessing exactly what you want, but yeah. you're like so clearly not there. And, and, and they so heard I, you around and you get like one meal and- Oh my gosh. And, and maybe 150 bucks for the day, maybe. Yeah, you're not even human. No. For sure. And every, and every extra is like desperately hoping like they get that upgrade. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the director will talk to me and maybe I'll get the upgrade. Yeah. Maybe I'll be a featured extra, which could get me Ooh. into SAG or something. Do you, yeah. Is, that, is SAG a deal up in uh, uh, yeah. Canada too? Is that we have a works? sister union called ACTRA, but they, they basically okay. work together. Yeah. It's weird. Like I, I joined the Canadian union like 11 years ago yeah. and I'm with you. I was so desperate to get it. Yeah. yeah. And I spent... It's so expensive, especially when you've got crazy, whether it's like student loans or like I was barely paying my rent to then pay like the 1600 bucks to try and join the union. Yeah. Absolutely it's, ridiculous. But people do it. It's and yeah. And then you have to make a certain amount just to get health insurance. Well, <laughs> different story uh, between uh, the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, uh, we're, we're all good on that front. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, we're uh, avoiding going to the doctor for coughs sometimes, but um, well, you know, just sometimes. So at this time, you mentioned in a different interview that so your channel came to a lull, right oh, after you quit the cooking videos. Absolutely, 
Yeah, that we, I decided on sketch comedy. I, and I said, from here on in, every video is going to be sketch comedy. And I think I made an announcement on my channel or something. And at the time we were around maybe, maybe 40,000 subscribers or 45 and we lost half of them. Oh. <laughs> like the, all that year, all those years of work, all those videos. Um, and the channel virtually went dormant. Like I used to get maybe four or 5,000 views a video. And now we were like scraping at a thousand, like maybe we would get a thousand views on a sketch. Um, yeah, but there was something nice about that in a way. Of course, at the time I was like, oh, this was a terrible choice were because you? we have no money and, and uh, the channel's not going to make any money and I'm not really booking any jobs, but, um, the cool part about it was that it basically served as like a bit of an incubator for us. Like, like we were making videos in a vacuum. So it allowed us to get really good, really fast. Um, well, we were already good before. And when I say we, I mean me and my husband, because you don't see him, but he's behind the camera and we work kind of in tandem, but we were making really good sketch comedy videos that absolutely no one was seeing. And my writing got really good, really fast. And my acting got, well, I think my acting was like already up there, but so then we had a year's worth of videos that just nobody had seen. And then of course, um, we had a video go viral in 2020 yeah. and this like epic landslide of views happened because I had an entire library of content that nobody had seen. So it was like that one video was getting 20 million views, but every video behind it was like getting hundreds of thousands of views just because people were like, oh shit, she has like an entire portfolio yeah. So it was kind of cool. Well, I think that's the important thing for like creators out there right now who are struggling to find their voice or find their thing and they almost want to give up. And it's like, don't give up. You're like doing the work. It's almost yeah. like a sailboat uh, out in the middle of the ocean. There's no wind, but you're building a badass sail. So when the wind comes, you know, it's got something to exactly. grab onto and send you. That's a good analogy, Charlie. I, got I like that. that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, was like I was staring at an inspirational poster uh, with like a <laughs> bunch of sailboats uh, that was over a uh, toilet somewhere at a bar I frequent and I thought about it. So thank you very much. Uh, for Great. It. I'm glad I'm glad mm -hmm. you found the appropriate moment to use it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I waited this whole time. Uh, just and you're like, it. now's the sailboat analogy. Now, right here. now it's coming. Here I Boom. go. Now, when all this took off, then did you feel the pressure of, oh, because everybody saw that video. Um, I feel like it, it, was, it was so perfectly placed oh, uh, at that time. And it said so much about some of the most complicated issues going on, um, whether it be uh, George Floyd or the pandemic in mm. such a light hearted and comedic way. I mean, the, your writing is incredible in that. Oh, did, you, did you have pressure then to one up to perform. Right oh yeah. man. I'm lucky that I didn't at all. I think there's something to, and I was going to add this before I, like I, I think as a creator or comedian, you just have to truly love what you do. You have to be willing to not be able to pay your rent for the love of what you do. And I think that I was lucky enough to be in a position that I had an entire year where I basically just created content out of love be, because I had things to say, because I wanted to be funny, because I wanted to try different ridiculous characters on camera, which meant that when the video went viral, I was like so confident in myself as an artist and creator and a writer that I was like, oh, that's awesome. That like truly very fucking awesome that everyone was seeing it. But I was also like, oh, I have so much more to say. Like I felt no obligation to make more pandemic videos because I was like, oh no, I, uh, now I got to talk about this thing. And now I want to try this funny character. And, you know, and, and we did touch back to the pandemic characters. I think I've made like six of the videos now, but it certainly had the opportunity to be like more of a cash cow than it was, but I didn't want to go down that route. Cause I didn't want that to be what I was known for. And I also didn't, I had no desire to like chase the dragon of views, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make, I just want to make funny shit. That's all I want to do. Well, I noticed that. And, um, part of what is indicative of that, I think is like, 
your use of silence, which I feel like is very underutilized uh, on the internet, but you mm. use silence like beautifully, you know, what, what you don't say uh, in a lot of moments. It, you just it certainly, that's not something that I do a lot. I'm so self-conscious that anytime there's silence, people drop off, you know, so I chase that dragon, yeah. but I cut out a lot of that yeah. unless it's like, a, anyway, the point is, is that there's so much confidence in that and your acting is incredible because you're not, I mean, it's not like you're not doing anything in the silence, but I feel like so many of your videos employ that. Yeah. Is that a, a conscious move on your end or is that just your natural um, writing? I think it's, I think it's a bit of both. I think there's like, um, I think there's a lot of humor in silence. I'm also very aware that YouTube is the platform that allows that. Like mm -hmm. in TikTok, it doesn't work. And, right. and the attention span is so short. And so I think as a creator, you just have to know how are people ingesting this content and what's, what's the, the best way I can set up this joke for success. And, and so we will recut my stuff for TikTok. I'll right. make it faster okay. because people don't have the attention span there. Um, but yeah, for YouTube, I like, like, I like pushing the boundaries of what people expect. I'm not a huge fan of like super super fast comedy. And I do uh -huh. feel like stuff is cut so fast now, yeah. um, that I like when things can breathe a little bit, but it, yeah. but you run the risk of like, yeah, people will totally click off a hundred percent. They do. Right. Right. So. Well, it, but it's, it's, um, it, that's a good point though. When you bring up TikTok and reels and all these things, um, you don't chase the dragon of views, but you obviously, do these things you do TikTok, yeah and uh you do instagram and everything so do you view that as just a different sort of comedic challenge or is it like oh we gotta do it whatever you know well, yeah i guess it's a bit of a like i'm scared to become irrelevant for sure <laughs> like when a new platform shows up you're like oh fuck i know i gotta get with the kids i, I, I gotta got make more content yeah, i know um Right now we're in the phase of like work smarter, not harder. So I'm trying my best to not have to remake, make new content for all these different platforms. Instead, I'm okay. trying to figure out, well, I've, I've got these sketches that have performed well on YouTube. How can I use the content that already exists yeah. and just put it on these other platforms? Um, I've tried to like put entire videos onto TikTok and that doesn't quite work. So it does need a bit of editing and we do yeah. that, but yeah, I mean, it's hard. Like I, I want to be excited and, and current when, when new platforms show up, but oftentimes it's me just going, Oh fuck, That's I got to make more stuff. I know YouTube came up with like YouTube shorts and I was like, give me a break. I know. Well, here's the nice thing about that. You can take all of your, uh, TikTok library and mm. download it using SnapTick or some website like that. So it gets rid of the watermark oh. and, then, and then just start up, like just take all your TikToks and just schedule them out on YouTube shorts. Yeah. Because you can see, um, well, you just hit a million followers. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. million subscribers. That's amazing. Yeah. So why don't you tell me how to do better on uh, YouTube? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but that's a I, hack. Yeah, I don't... I just, I'm just stubborn with yeah. YouTube shorts. Yeah, it's yeah. not how I like ingesting YouTube. And so I've like put my foot down. Oh, I you're should just probably, well, I've tried a little bit. You've had a ton of success though. Yeah, that's I, why. I love your YouTube shorts. Oh, thank you very much. It's mostly recycled content. Most of that's it. That's the it's, way to do it. it. Yep. We're just, I'm, I am an environmentalist, uh, especially yeah. when it comes to content. I reduce, reuse, recycle. That, you got it because because otherwise the jokes die like right? otherwise the content is super disposable and sometimes the writing is really good yeah and, and it's relatable yeah and i think that the shorts if i would pitch it to you as maybe something to do they're like trailers for your bigger videos so sure even your more popular ones you just make them into shorts but the easiest thing to do is just download your tiktok library and schedule it out for the next few months on yeah. YouTube. And then it's like, eh, if it doesn't work, who cares? But yeah. You know, yeah. You, Maybe it, I start a new shorts channel. Yeah. That's smart. Um, I think that that may be working harder uh, than you <laughs> want to. Than smarter? 
Yeah, I didn't want to say that part, but uh, okay. it it's the thing is, is the shorts don't go out to all your subscribers. So like if you're worried about flooding your subscribers with those, they don't get yeah. a notification on that. What it does do, though, is puts you into the shorts algorithm. And so it introduces you to a whole new audience, I think. Craig. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think. I, well, I, we've been kind of like on one of those shorts creator community things. You probably got an email about that that Ooh. you ignored. And uh, I ignored mine for a little bit. But then I just started doing it. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm mostly I don't know. Well, you're having success and I love yeah. them. So oh, thank you. You're very, you're very, very kind. Oh, sorry for the interruption, ladies and gentlemen, but I just want to thank our amazing sponsors of the Cripes Cast. First and foremost, Jolly Good Soda, title sponsor of the podcast. It's a great soda. You can only buy it in stores in Wisconsin, okay? But it's so good, I recommend you buy it off the internet, okay? Yeah, that series of tubes. You go on that series of tubes, you go to jollygoodsoda.com, okay? And, and then you get all the soda you want, and you need the sour power if you're making a proper brandy old fashioned okay you just need that as your floater so get that they got t-shirts they got merch they got the whole deal jollygoodsoda.com check them out i also want to thank duluth trading company it's a great midwest brand with clothes that actually value function over the the look of them okay and they look very nice all right as i've said before their camel cargo shorts i i've worn them to funerals and i'll do it again anyway they're great pants i wear them outside working i wear them down in the basement i was doing some plumbing i was wearing them there okay and they don't sag down like your typical plumbers i tell you that no one needs to see that on me okido hey i even wore them hunting we went out we got a couple birds uh, me and my dad a couple pheasants and they were great comfortable warm it was colder than heck that day jeez louise it was like i don't know 11 degrees or something my hands were freezing my legs were toasty though i need to get some of those duluth gloves obviously so anyway duluth train company big thanks for sponsoring the podcast and also folks if you're looking for gifts Gifts for Midwest people, you know, and you want a shirt that says, tell your folks I says hi, or Ope, or Keep Her Moving, or Jeez Louise, or Crime and All Friday, or Lures, Fishing Lures, Koozies, Cribbage Boards, whatever. Go to mandwalkman.com or just go to cripescast.com, click on the merch button, and all of our stuff is made in the USA. That's very important to me to make it in the USA, and it, honestly, it's hard these days with supply, and, you know, just the, the supply chain is really making it difficult, but we do it. We do it because we think it's the thing to do, and it's great quality stuff. And it's all printed in Wisconsin. So check it out. Cripescast.com. Click on the merch. That's a great way to support the podcast. And thank you all for listening. All right. Let's get back to the interview with Julie Nolke. Where did you guys meet? Because he's a filmmaker. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, we met uh, just after I graduated university. So we've been together for 10 years. And uh, he went to school for directing. Okay. Um, and he does do his own projects. He's got a show on, uh, well, a Canadian show up here on a Canadian network. Um, but yeah, he, he works on stuff separately. We've made several short films together and then he'll also do kind of the camera work for the YouTube channel as well. From an editing standpoint, uh, is that all you? Uh, I used to, yeah, it used to be all me. And now I, I think it was last November. I hired an editor just to okay. help. Yeah. And, and was that sort of like, oh, I'm giving away the keys to the kingdom. This isn't yep. going to be as good. So you're kind <laughs> oh, of like a man. control. You got a lot I'm of control. I'm such going. a micromanager. Yeah. I'm so, I've gotten better for sure. Yeah. But so much of comedy, I think it's comedy specifically. So much of it is in the edit. Yes. Like, especially, especially when you are acting with yourself. And so obviously the timing is not there because you know, you, you don't have your scene partner across from you. So, um, I was really, really hesitant to give up the edit. Cause I was so worried that the stuff was going to be missing. Right. Um, but we just got a really frigging good editor and he's great. And he's like, learned my style. He like picked it up very, very quickly. Um, yeah. And now, yeah. and now it works and he's fast too. That's the other thing is I was never that fast. So it's it's me i've got a great team myself and it's yeah. amazing like how resistant we can be to like let someone do something but then it's like uh just the the lift it takes off and you can teach someone your style 
Totally. Though, though you think you can't for whatever reason, you're like, ah, oh, they'll, yeah. ne- they'll never learn. I'll just do it myself. Yeah. And then, and then in like a week, they're better than you at it. And you're like, um, oh, I, I, yeah. Give up. <laughs> or they just had like better ideas. Right. They're like, oh, right. we could go this direction. They're like, no, that's not, that's not the best choice. Yeah. Yeah. But would you say like editing in the early stages, maybe for people out there who are trying to do their own stuff, would you say mm-hmm. that that's important to do right off the bat, even if they're not an editor? Certainly. I mean, yeah. I think wearing multiple hats, knowing what it's like to edit, to produce, to write, makes you better in all fields. Like even as an actor now, um, I'm acting in this, uh, there's a new comedy here in uh, Canada called Run the Burbs. It's on CBC. Mm -hmm. Um, Hopefully it comes to the States soon. But um, even working on that show, which is larger and in traditional TV, being an editor it's just, it's just so much easier to grasp what a scene is and what the director needs from you. And, you know, you look at the camera and you go, oh, I know what type of lens that is. I know they're going to capture, you know, maybe my medium shot, but I won't, I'll, I'll wait to do my big thing until I get to my close up, you know, or whatever it is. Yeah. It makes you, it makes you smarter in all the different fields. And so, I mean, I think being an editor makes you a better writer because right. you know what's possible. Um, and it also makes you a better actor because you know that they can't really fix stuff in post when it comes right. to your performance. So yeah, you and just got to be better. Did you have those moments where you like you shot something and you were in the edit and you were like, why couldn't you have just said it this way? You know, <laughs> like, oh, like that, yeah. that anger at yourself kind of. Totally. One thing I learned, which you I'm sure you found is Okay, when you write something, yeah, the joke on the page sometimes doesn't doesn't come off the page as well. Right. But what I have found is that when I'm acting with another uh, like improviser or actor, there's like a there's a desire to kind of punch up the jokes as we're acting. Yeah. And for some reason, I find that those punch ups hardly ever work. Uh Like it's always what was on the page, what was like clean and had good rhythm and kept the momentum of the sketch going that works better than us kind of becoming immune to that joke and just trying to one up it on the day. So one thing I have learned is always get a clean version of the script and then you can improvise on top of it. Right. They're like, I've just found in the past that if I don't get the script and I just get the improvised version, like the joke is not funny yeah. To anybody else afterwards. Yeah. Kind of like joking the joke. Like you get too totally. Cute with it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're in Toronto now, correct? Yeah. Okay. What would you say the difference is between acting in Canada versus uh, the States? I, or what's the perception in Canada of acting in the States? It's like you got to get to LA, you got to get to New York, or is. Yeah. Uh, especially these days when people don't necessarily need to be anywhere to, um, you know, really make their bones. Yeah. Um, Oh gosh. What do I think? I think it's um, there's such a good community up here um, of, of comedy, particularly a great community of actors. I think unfortunately Canadian media gets really Americanized Um, and we lose our own identity in an effort to make stuff that is suitable for an American audience. Mm -hmm. Um, like, you know, if you have any sort of Canadian accent, whenever you audition, you have to make sure you don't have it, even if it's for a Canadian show. Yeah. Yeah, And that's just super minor, but like, you know, we'll never make shows where you talk about, oh, I'm in Toronto. You know, it's always, I'm in New York, I'm in Chicago, Um, And I don't necessarily love that because I do feel like there are other kind of English speaking countries like New Zealand and Australia and even, you know, Britain who can like happily make stuff with like the stamp of their country on it. Yet for some reason, it feels like Canada is just like so desperately making stuff for the larger American audience. Um, But that being said, I think we have like a really, really lovely comedy community up here. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of money. Um, in TV and film up here. So as an actor, like you would have to have a side job if you were just acting, which is why I think so many Canadians are drawn to LA because you can actually make a living there Uh as an actor. Yeah, the shows don't 
they don't pay super well up here. They just, and like commercials. Yeah. So. Well, what is it about Canada that, yeah, it doesn't get that, like, um, that love in pop culture. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I kind of do feel like it's changing a little bit. We had a show called Letter Kenny. Have you ever yeah. heard of that one? Oh yeah. Yeah. Of that one's like pretty authentically Canadian. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's like a pride with that one and it seems to be doing well. So I like to think that the landscape is changing a little bit, but I think at the end of the day, it's just that like the U S has 300 million people and we have 30 million people and it's just a larger audience, you know? Yeah. And so, and that same with the YouTube content, if I'm being honest, like we don't make anything hyper Canadian because a majority of people watching are American. It's just a large, it's a larger audience. And so with that, like, I will talk about American politics over Canadian politics because mm. it resonates with more people. Right. I mean, I feel like I kind of, found something similar in the Midwest that it was largely sort of skipped over, I guess. Mm. Um, but then Letterkenny is an example of when you fully embrace it, it can have its yeah. benefits too. Have um, Has that been something that you would like to, I guess, see more of? Or um, is, it, is that not something that you want to sort of Uh, take on yourself? I don't know that I want to take it on myself. I think Mm -hmm. if, if I could do anything to help our industry up here, I would love to have a show, you know, that maybe had like HBO or Netflix backing it, but had the entire show made here with Canadian creatives and, um, you know, and just like bringing money into the Canadian economy. Because the one thing we do find is a lot of American shows film up here but they'll get all their key creatives, all their big actors will be from the States. And that can be, that can be, I don't know, a missed opportunity. Like there was a, there was a role I did. Um, I auditioned for, uh, for a role for the show and I didn't book the role and it was like a large principal, but I booked a smaller role and they flew an actress in from New York for the large principal. And I was like, and you paid for her hotel and I'm right yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it, it's just, I think it's like a stigma of like, oh, the better talent or the, like the bigger talent will come from the States. And so my hope is just to make something that's like, that's from the Canadian side of the industry, but is not necessarily like Canadian leaning. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I got you. We got a lot of interesting phrases in the Midwest. And I think I've gotten a lot of uh, comments from Canadians saying how uh, similar uh, yeah. can- Canadian content in the U.S. is or in the Midwest stuff is. Are, mm-hmm. are there uh, phrases that you say up there that you think would uh, you'd like to see more of uh, said in, <laughs> in the U.S.? Do you have any favorite Canadian phrases? Um, well, see, now I don't know. I don't know. Are they Canadian? Um do you, do you guys, you say like, um, do you say we're going to send her? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's very, uh, like what, uh, Larry, the enticer kind of thing. Oh that, yeah. That, that when you're like, that, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just going to send her bud. Yeah, like that, right that, before you like go off a jump or something. Yeah. That's okay. very Canadian. We don't say oh, that as much. You don't it, say that. If anything, we say it because we've seen a lot of, uh, videos of, uh, people sending it in Canada <laughs> yeah. on the internet. Yeah. Just going to send her, bud. Um, <laughs> and then we also have, this one's like a little more niche. It's called, um, it's like a skookum chucher. And what it is, is um, when you have something that uh, is, is really well built, it's skookum. Like it's like solid, yeah. it's made of good quality materials. You have something that's, that's skookum. Uh, a chucher is like something that goes. So if you had a really good drill that yeah. was like well built and made, it's like a skookum chucher. Okay. Because it, it wow. fucking it can handle the job, <laughs> you know. And the way you just said uh, "fucking" was very Canadian. Oh, okay. Was, yeah. And you fucking yeah. And it can fucking handle the job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a yeah. skookum chucher. I like that. A skookum chucher. Yeah. Nice. It, it, yeah. Do Do you say oofta? I don't say oofta. Okay, what is have that? Have you heard it? It's like no. um, it's like a Norwegian phrase, but it means like uh, like it can mean a bunch of things, like expressing surprise or dismay or relief. You just say oh oofta, 
you know, like it, for a good thing or oofed up for a bad thing, you know, it's just in your inflection of it. Oh, I like oh, that. Yeah, you can try that one. Or how about oak? Do you guys say oak? No, for like, what? Well, when so, would you say that? Like if someone's like kind of in your way and you say, oh, can I just squeeze right past you there? Do you ever say that? No, you have to, you say, sorry. Oh, you say sorry. Yeah. Yeah. S sorry. You say sorry. And, and if somebody bumps you on the street, you say, sorry. Okay. Yeah. It's always your fault. When in doubt, it's sorry. your fault. Yeah. 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 We got oh, that sorry. too. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Apologize they first, ask questions <laughs> later. Yeah. They've got a saying in, I mean, the Maritimes in Canada is basically a different country. So is Quebec. It's uh -huh. like we got we got a bunch of countries all mashed up into one. But in the Maritimes, they got their own accents. But I know they've got one saying where they call um, they'll say, like, oh, by it's about to be a brewer which is means like the, um, it, it's a, a brewer, which means that the next day it's going to be a storm. Okay. Okay. I got, it. they're looking so at the sky or they're, they're looking they're... at the sky going, Oh, that's a brewer. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That, uh, accent's beautiful too. I think you should really incorporate Thanks. more of that. At, yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. No, it's real good. Honestly. Uh, <laughs> so when you grew up, did you have like because when you watch your videos, you kind of, your accent is very neutral, but mm -hmm. would you say after a couple of beers, what is your accent like? <laughs> um, I'd say I have a pretty neutral accent. Uh, I'm originally from Alberta, which is like the Texas of Canada, very conservative, a lot of cowboys, yeah. um, and like super, super, super neutral accents. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. I, I, I think if I was in Northern Ontario, they have accents. I mean, Quebec, obviously, and then Maritimes. But yeah, I feel like the the central part of Canada, alas, is very Americanized. Yeah, right. It, it, I shouldn't say that like it's a bad thing. We all we all just have the same accent. There's just nothing special. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, but you you do the the Maritimes uh, pretty good. Is that is the Maritimes? And forgive me for being an American who doesn't know anything. Is that you idiot? Is thank you. Thank, you know, honest to Pete, that's what I need to hear just to get me really going there. Is that <laughs> is that the east uh coast kind of up like yeah. north of Maine, sort of? In north of Maine, yeah. It is. Uh, no. I don't know why <laughs> yeah. that's like, of course, you're going to make it about yourself. You're going to pick an American location. You know, it's just what we do down here. And I don't mean anything <laughs> by it, but you know, it's just. It's the last thing I remember from geography class. Oh, okay, gosh. so I apologize for that. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, so we, there's uh, it is north of Maine. It's the accent is like almost a little bit Irish sounding. Yeah, right, right. Like they do the the Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Oh yeah, you know, and then if you say Jesus, you know, you got to finish it with Mary and Joseph. Finish that Jesus, prayer up. Oh, Mary and Joseph. How about cripes? Do you do like a, a cripe solve Friday or something like that? I mean, I don't say yeah. that. <laughs> is, is there that that idea of like trying not to swear? So saying words that sound like swears, that's where cripes comes from. Instead of saying taking the Lord's name in vain, they say all oh, cripes. Oh, cripes. Yeah. I mean, I I'm sure there is okay. in the country. I feel like uh, I feel like the Maritimes are very Catholic because there's a lot of Irish origins there. Right. So probably I'm assuming, and same with Quebec. But Quebec, yeah. oh my gosh, the accent there is like the equivalent of Scottish to like UK. Like yeah. the the French accent is so not Parisian French, and right. even the lingo is different. And like the um, uh, the bad words are all entirely different i was up there for just for laughs uh really yeah and i was i was trying to figure all that out and i learned a couple swear words but i already forgot them but yeah that there's some i mean they speak french solely uh in the suburbs of montreal yes. don't they yeah i remember i was doing a, a video for a movie theater up there at one point like a pre Ooh. before the things and it was yeah. all in french and so i was trying to uh figure out that also what a terrible job for me you know why was I why was I doing that and then when I came in this is what I remember uh when I came in to do that video I got pulled over by customs and I remember the uh what do you call the the Mounties is that uh the RCMP yeah they were like uh 
so why can't a Canadian do this job? And I was like, ah, uh, pretty sure they could. <laughs> I don't oh, know. No. I was given the wrong answers. Oh, I, was no. given, I, I then realized that that was not the right thing to say. And I may not get into the country. So I had to make up a few lies. Yeah, to do spot. some backpedaling. Uh, yeah. 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 I had to backpedal real quick there. Oh, so shit. that's how it goes. Yeah. Oh, well. But enough about that. Where do you want to sort of take your content now? Like, what would be a dream for you now? Um, just, just, just making stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like the goal for so long was to be famous and be in movies. And the landscape has changed so much that like, it's really fucking lucrative to be online and yeah. more people see you. Uh-huh. And uh, granted, like, I don't make the type of produce stuff that you do. Like, I freaking love your um, husband's in the Target parking lot. Oh, thank but you. But I can only imagine, like, the producing levels that went into that. And, uh, like, I'd love I'd love to be able to make stuff like that, whether it be for TV or YouTube. I think it's just going to be a matter of, like, making different stuff to keep me, like, artistically satiated. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Well, I think that's kind of my mentality too. You don't really need, it used to be go to LA and, you know, do the thing, but now you could have a TV show and still nobody uh, is going to watch it, you know, but they, they see your videos all the time. Was that your initial motivation was like, like, was it fame? Like early on? And I'm it not saying It was the that money a- and the drugs and the women. <laughs> yes. That's what I wanted. You know, that's what I had you pinned for. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but that initial motivation when you were a kid that made you want to like go and, and, uh, act as in college, like mm-hmm. what, what inspired that? You think? Um, I think I, I don't mean this in a bad way, but I I think I'm like a bit of a narcissist. Okay. Like I really like being front and center. I just like performing. I think it's like in my bones to like be in front of people and have people like me. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know what it, like, I, I don't know how to talk about it without it sounding like I'm a horrible, like (laughs) self-centered person, but really like, I just freaking love performing Mm -hmm. and And so it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily about the fame at the beginning. It was more just like, I want to be the best. Mm -hmm. Like I want to, I want to be front and center and I want everybody to laugh my jokes and everybody to cry at my scenes where they should be feeling things. And I want to be the best at that. Mm -hmm. And then from there you like go to school and you're like, oh, and I want to be famous and I want to have all the money and I want an Oscar. You know, yeah. you just kind of build your dream up from there. Right, right. Well, you say that, but I don't know that like your actions really uh, like play into that as much because you were doing all those videos for so long just for sort of the craft and building the craft. Yeah. So have you, has it like if, if you weren't getting views right now, you'd still be making videos, I would assume, but correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Like I probably like maybe would have had to get another job. I'd still be making video. I'd still be auditioning. I'd still be like making stuff with my friends, pitching shows. Yeah. That was kind of like the routine of my life, which was like, like develop a show with my friend, go to a production company, try and pitch it, pitch it around to networks. No luck. Yeah. Start from square one, develop a show. Yeah. Yeah. I did that. And then at the same time, you're like auditioning and. I don't know. You just like, I'm so used to having so many irons in the fire that it's kind of weird that one of them has actually worked and taken off. You know, I'm very thankful for sure, but it doesn't make me stop the routine of, okay, now I have YouTube, but like, let's make other stuff, you know? Yeah. 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 And, and when you've gained, um, your level of fame and you've gotten to sort of a different level than where you were. Have you noticed uh, like your friends changing the way they act about you or have you had people come out of the woodwork or whatever? Everybody's asking me for money. Is that it? Is no, that it? No, no. Um, 
Definitely, definitely like some scuzzy people coming out of the woodwork for sure. Yeah. Well, scuzzy. Sc- what, what, what's the scuzzy. definition of scuzzy? That like might- a little, like a little gross, like a little yeah. seedy. Like yeah. you didn't talk to me before. <laughs> Belly, Belly's up to the trough. Yeah. That's how I say it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it's like, oh, now you want to be in a video <laughs> when I asked you before. <laughs> uh, so what do you say in, in that moment? Oh man, I just, I, I just ignore it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't want to burn any bridges, but I also feel like I I've, we've been in this industry for so long and I'm so tired. Right. (laughs) Like I really am truly. So I love what we do, but I'm so tired. And Mm -hmm. so I feel like I've earned the right to be able to not give people my time who don't deserve it. And it's not out of being entitled or being like, I don't want to be a bitch, but at the same time, it's like, I only have so many hours in the day. I've worked really, really hard to not have to put up with your bullshit. Yeah. And that's, that's how I justify it. No, I, I, it's tough to do though, especially like, you know, I uh, like, do you think you got that, uh, Canada nice thing, you know? Or Certainly. No? Yeah. yeah. And there's like, a. You know, I was, I was at the bottom of the ladder for a very long time. And I know what it feels like to be down there and all the people who, you know, who were doing better than me, who gave me a hand like that didn't go unnoticed. And I, and so, because I know what it feels like to be really, really working in this industry and not see any traction, I'm also very aware of now having some success and wanting to help everybody I can because of all the people that helped me. So it's a small industry. I don't want to burn any bridges. I don't want anybody to think that I didn't give them an opportunity when I had every chance to. Right. Um, it's a, it's a fine balance. I guess, I guess oh, this is all very hypothetical and it would be like, I would need like an example of a, of a circumstance to say how I would respond into it. But yeah, yeah, it ju- it, ju- it really just depends. But for the most part, it's like I try and help when I can. But if I feel like you're trying to take advantage of me, I just won't answer. Right, it's right. Probably better. Yeah, yeah, better yeah. that way. But um, do you find like um, sort of that uh, at some point you're like you don't want to be mean to anybody. You want to like be a nice person. But then sometimes that sort of niceness gets kind of taken advantage of? And then how do you deal with, with that? It may just be not answering. I mean, it's happened a lot in this industry. Yeah. Uh, many, many times. There's so many times where I have done stuff for free um, with the hopes of like, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Uh, or there's been so many times where I have said, oh, I will take more of the workload on myself because that's the kind thing to do. And I would hope that, you know, someone would be do the same, but the realities are like, no, (laughs) people, people probably won't. And I think you just, I think a person just has to set boundaries because I'm still more than happy to collaborate and do stuff for free and help friends. And like, I'm not better than any job, but I need to set my own boundaries of time and, you know, the cost benefit analysis of helping certain people out. Yeah. Otherwise, you you if you're spending all your time doing that, you don't have the time to do all the things that make them reach out in the first place kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't spread myself so thin that I can't be like 100% for everybody that I've committed to helping. You right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Are there any creators out there that you've wanted to collab with uh, at all and just haven't gotten around to it? <laughs> Do I say, do I say Charlie? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, that's happening. Yeah. 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 That'd be nice. That'd be real good. So we got that out of the way. That was very Canada. Nice of you, by the way. I feel like you like walked me into that a little bit though. I definitely did. Yeah. I wanted to get that like on. I think uh, it'd be hilarious for us to collab. I think it'd be so fun. Yeah, no, that'd be great. You know, I'll come up, uh, what next week or something, you know, we're, we're in lockdown. Oh yeah. Well, we don't, full bore lockdown. Right. We don't believe in that in the U S right. so yeah. So I'll be there, uh, maskless and coffin and we'll, we'll find something fun. Yeah. Yeah. Bring the army over. Um, yeah. we actually just had an insane snowstorm. This is not interesting to anybody. No, but... I saw this. I saw this on your story. Please continue. It's so great. Toronto, Toronto is built somewhat like New York in that the streets are quite small Yeah, and we cannot handle 
the level of snow that has fallen. So what they actually do, and they're, they've only just started it and they've done it past winters is they have to truck out snow. So they'll fill up trucks and like, yeah. cause you can't, you can't have like a sidewalk and then like a massive mound of snow and still have like room on the road. Right. Anyway, I was going to say, you don't want to come here now. It's like, you can't drive anywhere. I got my car stuck yesterday and I just had to abandon it <laughs> and like walk to like my meeting and then like come back. And I had like a, I had to like shovel it out and you know, you rock it. I've got, I'm yeah. really great at getting a car unstuck actually. I, well, I, I saw that in your, cause you were spending what your day helping a bunch of people get their cars unstuck, weren't you? Oh my God. So many people don't know. Like, I don't understand how you can live up here and not know how to get a car unstuck. Yeah. Like it, it just baffles me. And the people are like, oh, you got to gun it. No. Like, and okay. I, you got to toggle that reverse and drive. Let's get it rocking. You yeah. Know? <laughs> okay, that, that's a great bit. Can you give us uh, getting your car unstuck yeah. from the snow 101? Okay, if I do not have any supplies, hopefully you would hope that you had maybe gravel or sand or kitty litter or even like my mom used to keep broken hockey sticks in the trunk oh. to be able to like put under her tires. Cause we used to like, Calgary has a ton of snow. You used to get stuck a lot. Ton um, of snow, ton of broken hockey sticks. Ton of broken hockey sticks. Yeah. Um, if I don't have that stuff, the first thing I do is I kick out the snow from the tires. If it's two wheel drive, you find the tires that are in control. You yeah. kick out the snow behind them and you try and get it all kind of choppy, right? Yeah. Cause yeah. The, all you can do is try and have the snow give you even a little bit of traction. Yep. Yeah. Then you get, the driver's gotta be an expert. The driver can't, I mean, you gotta be just tickling the accelerator. You can't be, you can't be gunning it in any one direction. So they gotta be toggling reverse and drive, uh -huh. you know, just like as fast as they can, like a pro. Yeah. Then you yeah. get your pushers. Yeah. Behind. Yeah. And they and they rock and they work together. And it's not, oh, we're gonna push and we're all gonna push together at once. Yeah. It's they go in rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, all yeah. about it's just like sex. It's all about the rhythm. <laughs> and then boom, you get it out of there. Perfect. Just like sex. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you do uh boards at all? Do you I mean the hockey sticks are kind of that, but do you have planks? I mean, you're not carrying them around your car. If, but if, if you, you know have them around, I've used um floor mats before. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've used the floor mats of the car. Yeah. Anything to you, get a little traction. Yeah, cardboard. There's a recycling bin somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, a Kia that was like just out front here that was trying to get out. And there was so much snow. And this Kia sole was like so low to the ground oh, that it geez. just was a snow plow. It was like <laughs> flat out, just like plowing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a mess. Oh, uh, uh, that's great. Well, I think you helped out a lot of people today by giving them those tips. I, I you know, I don't think even Good. if they're new to Canada, I don't think they're uh, gonna have, uh, issues getting their cars out and, and the key to well, it they can all, always just send me a DM, like, just, oh, you know, see that's, you're not going to respond to the people who want, you know, a bit in one of your videos, but if you need your car <laughs> unstuck, you'll get that. You'll get that. Oh, from, that's Yeah. That well, time. I'll just send them an audio message. I'll let them know what's wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. that's awesome uh this has been super fun thanks so much before i let you I go love is, this. yeah this was great I, we started with your plant and now we're here and uh is there anything that i didn't ask uh that you're like oh, i wish someone would ask me this in an interview uh no no nope okay. i think you asked everything great um i'm working on a new show right now well i was on a new show i was a writer on it and an actor and it's only in canada for now but it's uh the lead actor was on kim's convenience which i believe you have in the states yeah or you can see have you heard yeah. of kim's convenience I've heard of one it, of the actors seen it, one of I the will. actors on there created the show that i worked on i was in the writer's room and i'm also acting in it and so when that comes to america i'll let you know uh, you you, watch it. there's no streaming platform to see it in the meantime though no which is okay. so it was really good that i um that i told you about it yeah okay so well you can't watch it no i mean it's the anticipation that's what it's all about you know yeah, yeah. yeah. people are gonna love it when it comes here i'll keep doing yeah all right real good well thank you so much this was a lot of fun thank you this was great i enjoyed yeah. it and I and, hope you have a really nice rest of your week. Yeah. And uh, I hope if, you know, you have fun getting more cars out of the snow. We've got a few more months of it. So yeah, I'm on it. Out oh, there it's now. so fun. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Get just those, head out there. Yeah. Get those broken hockey sticks out. All right. Will do. We'll talk soon, Julie. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. And there you have it. That's my conversation with Julie Noki. Make sure you follow her on Instagram at Julie Noki. That's at J U L I E N O L K E. Check out her YouTube channel. Become one of her million plus subscribers. And big thanks to her. Again, I just can't tell you how much of a fan I am of her comedy. You're, you're doing yourself a treat if you go check it out. You can also follow her on TikTok. She mentioned uh, again at Julie Noki. And follow the Cast too at Cast Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, I believe in the next couple weeks, Weeks, we're going to start the Cripes cast TikTok. We've got a lot of funny bits from these interviews that we're going to pull out and put up on there. So keep your eye out for that. All right. In the meantime, everyone, keep her moving. Watch out for deer and tell your folks I says hi. Real good. Bye bye now. So roll out the barrel and get the band brewing. Life's got you down. Just keep her moving. It's on Wisconsin. The Badgers say it's the old Wisconsin Jubilee. You know, sometimes when you're ice fishing, you put your foot in the walleye hole and go ass over tea kettle and you think you're done. No, you got to keep her moving. 